As your next president, I will work tirelessly for you, whether in the Oval Office or out on the golf course, but mostly on the golf course. During my last term, I used the art of the deal to negotiate some of the greatest deals of all time. Despite having completely built the biggest and greatest wall ever built in the history of walls, I still needed a huge number of soldiers to patrol it. Nobody could climb it. They couldn't go through it. They couldn't go under it. But still, I needed those troops. So I phoned up President Tortilla of Mexico, a great president and a great friend who hates me. And I told him that he was going to supply tens of thousands of troops to patrol my wall. And because he respects me so much, he said, no, I'm not going to do that. And I said, yes, you are going to do that. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. So I said, yes, you are going to do that. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. And then I said, yes, you are going to do that. Or I'm going to impose a 3,000 percent tariff on all your exports. And he said, give me a minute. And he went away. And he called me back five minutes later, and he said, I've arranged the troops. Where do you want them? And I said, put them by the wall on your side, because I don't want them stinking up the United States. And he said, OK. See? That's how great I am at making deals. I'll give you another example. The French President, O come, O come, Emmanuel Macaroon, another great friend, wonderful guy, completely hates me. He was going to charge American companies a huge amount in tax to do business in France. And I said, get him on the phone. So they got him on the phone. And I said, oh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, you know how much I love your beautiful name. Emmanuel, I tell you what, you're not going to tax American companies to do business in France. And because he respects me so much, he said, yes, I am. I'll tax them to hell. And I said, no, you're not going to do that. And he said, yes, I am. And I said, no, you won't do that. And he said, oh, yes, I will. And I said, no, that's not going to happen. If you do that, I'll impose a 4,000 percent tariff on everything you export to the United States. And he said, give me a minute. And he went away. And he called me back five minutes later. And he said, I've dropped all the taxes. Do you want anything else? And I said, not right now, but I'll let you know when I want more. And he said, OK, see, another great deal thanks to my incredible deal-making skills. I'm on a roll, so I'll give you another example. Russian President Vladimir the Impaler, a great friend, a lover, really, he absolutely adores me. Well, he wanted to invade Ukraine all the way back during my presidency, and nobody knew how to stop him. So I said, get him on the phone. So they got him on the phone, and I said, oh, Vlad, 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 you know how much I love you, but I tell you what, you're not going to invade Ukraine. Leave Ukraine alone. And because he respects me so much, he said, yes, I am. Ukraine is mine, and nobody can stop me. Muhaha. And I said, no, you're not going to do that. And he said, yes, I am. And I said, no, you won't do that. And he said, oh, yes, I will. And I said, no, that's not going to happen. If you do that, I'll impose a 5,000 percent tariff on everything you export to the United States. And he said, give me a minute. And he went away, and he called me back five minutes later, and he said, I've burned the war plans. Ukraine is safe as long as you're in power. And I said, that's awesome. Do you want to stop by the White House for a blowy? And he said, sure. Ukraine was safe thanks to my incredible deal-making skills. And the same thing happened with President Xi of Xinhua, a good friend, a great friend. I call him King, because that's what I want to be, and he's promised to teach me how. Anyway, he was going to put huge tariffs on everything American, and he was going to invade Taiwan and all kinds of other bad stuff. And everyone was terrified of him, everyone but me. And they said, what are we going to do? Xinhua is going to take over the world unless we figure out some way to stop them. And I said, get me King Xi on the phone. So they got him on the phone, and I said, Oh, king, my king, my king, you know how much I admire and respect you, but guess what? You're not going to do all those bad, bad things. And because the love works both ways, he said, Yes, I am. Taxes today, tomorrow the world.
And I said, no, you're not going to do that. And he said, yes, I am. And I said, no, you won't do that. And he said, oh, yes, I will. And I said, no, that's not going to happen. If you do that, I'll impose a 10,000 percent tariff on everything you export to the United Spots. And he said, give me a minute. And he went away, and he called me back five minutes later, and he said, OK, I've reversed all the bad things I was going to do. I might even renounce communism because of you. And I said, that's great. And he said, sure, whatevs. And the world was safe thanks to my unparalleled deal-making skills. OK, I've got time for one more. This one is going to blow you away. It's so incredible, so incredible. Get this. So the Earth was being threatened by Lord Frangipan Jakun of the Intergalactic Brethren of Invasive Species. He wanted to eradicate all life so that he could steal our resources. We were just 16 minutes away from the Jakunian death ray being unleashed on our planet, and everyone was just crapping their pants. But because I wear diapers anyway, I was the only person who was completely unfazed. And I said, get Jakun on the phone. Open me a hailing frequency. So they got Jakun on the phone, a great man, a great friend, someone whose tentacles I greatly respect. And I said to him in flawless Ongonian, if you think you're going to wipe out all life on this planet, you've got another thing coming, you freak. And he said, clack, clack, gunner, floanga, kano, tick, 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 which translates to, hey, our technology far exceeds your own. So we'll just go ahead and do whatever the hell we want to your feeble little planet. And I said, the hell you will. And he said, too late. The beam is already warming up. And I said, no, you're not going to do that. And he said, oh, yes, I will. And I said, if you don't turn off that beam, I'll impose a 78 billion percent tariff on everything you import. No more Pathenian sledge hooks. No more Drosso schnick bearings. No more Jakunian Velcro. Your business empire will be in tatters. And he said, whoa there, hold up. Uh, give me two minutes. So I gave him five, but he came back in one, and he said, OK, the death ray is powered down. The people of Earth should be eternally grateful to you, Lord Trump. And I said, that's true. And he said, farewell. And he took his fleet of planet scourers away, and he never came back. So before you decide who to vote for this November, keep in mind the fact that the only reason you're able to vote is because I was able to prevent an interstellar war, because I was able to negotiate with the biggest, nastiest people in maybe the whole universe. And this is where I would normally say thank you, but really, you should be thanking me. Think about that.